Things are happening. Psalm 91. Is everybody there? Again, we are in the calm before the storm. Hallelujah. But we should be looking for the storm. Because there's going to be a holy shift. But there's a place you need to be when the storm hits. <laughs> Psalm 91, verse 1. He who what? Dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my what? Fortress and my refuge. My refuge and my fortress. My God in whom I will what? Trust. Surely He shall deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from the prevalence of pestilence. And He will cover us with His feathers and under His wings we will take refuge. His truth shall be our buckler, our shield and buckler, and we shall not be afraid of the terrible night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come near us. Only with our eyes shall we see and look and see the reward of the what? Wicked. Only if you're in the secret place. Because you have made the Lord who is our refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you. You ain't going to be tricked. Nor any plague come near you. It doesn't mean you won't catch a little bug or cold now and then. But you won't be plagued like the rest of the world will be plagued. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. In their hands they will bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Why? Because you have authority because the shadow of the Almighty covers you. It's called the mantle. And because you have set... Your love upon him, it says, therefore he will deliver you. <laughs> and when you set him on high, <laughs> because he will set you on high because he knows you know his name. It says you will call him and he will answer you. He says, I will be with you in trouble and I will deliver you and honor you. How many of y'all want to be honored by the Lord? Better than man, Amen. With long life I will satisfy you and I will show you my salvation. Powerful. It's called the secret place. That means that you and I will abide in the presence of God. But you've got to fight for God's presence. This is the third chamber of the tabernacle. This is where he says you must deny yourself, pick up the cross and fight and follow. There is a level of death that you and I must reach to press in. Too many people don't want to pay the price or pay the price. They're, too con they're very content with what they have. But the word says that we're to go deeper. Deep calls on to deep. The deeper you get into the presence of God, the more protected you are. The deeper you get into the presence of God, the more stronger you are. And this is not physical strength, not that it can't be physical strength, but it's spiritual strength, so you're not moved. There's too many people that are unstable because they're not willing to press into the depthness of God's presence. They call themselves Christians, but they flip-flop in every direction, not willing to get into that deep presence of God where it's no longer them that live but Him. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13,
and verse 5 and 6. Would you read it, please? Is everybody there? Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith or in the spirit. Whether you are in the secret place. Test yourselves. Do you know yourselves that Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. But I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. <laughs> now I pray to God that you do no evil. Not that we should appear approved, but that you should do what is honorable, though we may seem disqualified. For we can do nothing against the truth, but what? For the truth. Praise God. Examine ourselves if we are in the spirit or in the secret place, unless we are disqualified. So there are things that disqualify us from being in that place. What's he saying? Align yourself. We must align ourselves. But if you're not willing to examine yourself, then you're out of place. Somebody got it? Because in, in that place, you are always looking for conviction and you are looking for self-examination. Am I doing what's pleasing God? It's constant. These two things are always a constant. And you're always acknowledging him. You're not just taking things for granted. You're, you're serious. You don't fall in a place of compromise, complacency, and laziness. Those are things that you're always examining yourself. Am I becoming lazy? Am I taking things for granted? Am I making decisions without acknowledging? Am I fulfilling the vows that I said I would fulfill? All of these things are before me and you every moment. Why? Because God is always trying to expose an open door that would allow the enemy in to move you out of position. Amen? In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Did you ever get to a point where you said, gosh, I wish I would have done that? Amen. You regretted? You know, I mean, I wish I would have done this instead of what I did. Or I, 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 I wish I would have just done this and I wouldn't end up in the position I am now. Amen. Well, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to fall into that. Tremendous amount. Tremendous because they weren't willing to heed the voice of the Lord or heed the word of God, which is the voice of God. They weren't willing to heed it and take it serious. They were going to fall in a place they're going to regret tremendously. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1. Therefore, since we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we do not what? Lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In other words, veiled. There's a reason why a veil is there. It's associated with a curse and a spell. And many people are under the spell and don't realize that they're also under a curse. That's why the veil is there. So they cannot absorb the word of God. They don't have any consideration of practicing the truth or promoting righteousness. It isn't there. It isn't in them. Even though they proclaim them to be Christians because they are under a spell. Everyone say under a spell. That's why the veil comes. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are what? Perishing. Well, you cannot go into a place of perishing unless you are cursed. It says here, whose minds, whose thoughts, the God of this age has blinded. The God of this age. Who's the God of this age? 
Satan's kingdom and darkness. Who do not believe, who do not follow. Lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Wow. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not us. May the power of God and not us. Why? Because there is no power when there is a spell. There's nothing but survival, self. This veil is a spell, blinding to eyes and heart from the truth. They cannot receive it, they cannot accept it, and they cannot practice it. Does everybody get it? Because they're under the spell. Now, what is the spell? It's not fully in control of one's thoughts or actions. It's a state of enchantment and deception. So that person does not really have control over their thoughts and their actions. They're not able to weed out thoughts and discern what's of God and what's not of God. They act on every thought. And they react and don't respond because they're under the spell. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 15. But even to this day, when Moses is read a what? A veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is what? Taken away. Amen. Now, where the Lord is, the Spirit. Um, uh, now, where the Lord is, this. Now, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Freedom. But we all with unveiled face beholding as in the mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. But a person that's under the spell cannot be transformed. He stays stagnant. They stay the same. When one turns to the Lord, in other words, the word turn means repent, turns away. They, what are they repenting for? Associations with deception. That is the repent. Associations with deception because deception is sin. Is everybody okay? Amen. First John chapter 5. All glory under the spell. First John chapter 5. I want you to know that when you came into this realm, the enemy already placed on you. You came, you and I were born with the spell. We were born with the curse. That's why you must be born again so these things can be broke. The problem is, is maintaining that arena and walking right with God and staying in that secret place so that spell doesn't come back on. You know, a spell comes and you don't even know it. But everybody else will begin to see it. These are, when you and I came into this world, in this arena, the powers of darkness already had, you had demonic forces assigned to you. And they knew that eventually one day, Christ would try to intervene to rescue you. And they would do their best for you to refuse the rescue. 
and keep you under the spell. And many times, many people did reject the rescue. And it finally got to a place because they were trying to kill us before we could get rescued. And then when we got rescued, the thought that that was it. And went back under the spell again. Does everybody understand? And just thought just to, we can just live a life the way we wanted to do and whatever and everything's okay. And this is where there is false doctrine that brings people back under the spell. In 1 John chapter 5 and verse 18. Let's speak it. For we know that whoever is born of God does not sin because he who has been born of God does what? Keeps himself or what? Examines himself. He does not associate with deception, wickedness, or darkness. Why? Because he examines himself if he's in the spirit. And if he's in the spirit and in the secret place, he discerns where wickedness is. And verse 19, we know that, oh no, let's go a little further. I missed the most important part. And the wicked one does what? Does not touch him. He cannot touch you in that place. And what is he going to touch you with? A spell. He's going to touch you with a what? Spell. So by examining yourself to see if you are in the faith, to see if you are in the spirit, to see if you're in the secret place, to see if, to examine yourself for conviction and everything else so that your heart remains pure, your mind main, remains pure, your tongue remains pure, and everything about you remains pure then you maintain yourself in the secret place. But if anything is defiled, you are immediately removed from there. You cannot dwell in that place in any defilement. You become disqualified. Has everybody got it? Now those, again, and how does that happen? By associating with deception. Now there's a lot of deception out there. There's deceptive music. There's deceptive doctrines. There's deceptive education. There's all kinds of things that's deceptive. Even the media is deceptive. I look at the media right now as nothing but prophets of Baal. I want you to know that your government is really not your government. It is not your government. This is not what God planned. Oh, let's go a little further. <laughs> In verse 19, let's read verse 18 again so we can get refreshed on this thing. We know that whoever is born of God does not associate with deception, but he has been born of God, keeps himself from it, examines himself, and the wicked one doesn't touch him. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. That is a spell. Amen. Wow. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding. You can't get this without being in the secret place. That we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Yourself from, as can be an idol. People worship the works of their own hands. Those are idols. Only under the anointing of the secret place can we have an understanding to examine and discern. All the world is under the spell of deception and the veil of has separated them from the truth of reality. In 2 Timothy chapter 4. Oh, hallelujah. Do we need to know the truth? Jesus warned us that many false prophets would come. Many Christians. There would be many um, 
wolves in the body of Christ. They'll, be, they'll have a dress like a sheep. They'll pretend that they'll be Christians, but they're really not. They are pretenders. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready. Preach the word means speak the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Why? Because they will fall back under the spell. But according to their own desires, which move them out of position, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. These itching ears are caused by the spell. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to what? Fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. The time represents days. I want to share with you about, he said, there will be a time. That time he's talking about is what was prophesied by Jesus when he explained to them that there will be a time when it will come as the days of Sodom and Gomorrah and the days of Noah. And that time is now. This is what he's talking about. At the time represents the days of Noah and Sodom and Gomorrah. There were Nephilims. It is the Nephilim agenda. There were Nephilim agendas, Nephilim religion, Nephilim perversion, fallen angel, genetic intrusions, dictator governments with no rule of self or self-rule, but rules over others. They call themselves the elite gods and goddesses, while their followers are veiled by the spell of Baal. False um, deities of flesh, doctrines. This is happening right now. You and I are living it today, right now, at this moment. Right now. It's come down. Hallelujah. And Galatians chapter 3. We see many murder of children, abductions of children, all kinds of things, pedophiles. All of these things are perversion. All of these things are being exposed right now. Look at how many senators and congressmen are now being exposed. This isn't over with yet. Oh, we're, we're about to, I'm telling you, the storm is coming. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has what? Bewitched you or what? Put a spell on you. That you should not obey the truth. <laughs> who sucked you out, drew you out of the most, the secret place of the most high? Who brought you out of the presence of God and allowed you and caused you to agree or associate and approve of deception? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish having begun in the Spirit? Are you now being made perfect by the flesh? They fell back under the spell. Does everybody see this? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And a scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preach the gospel to Abraham before Hands saying, in you all nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of the faith are blessed with believing Abraham. For as many are, as are of the works of the law are under the what? Curse. 
For it is written, Curse is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident for the just live by faith. Faith is being in the spirit. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has what? Redeemed us from the curse or the spell of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Curse is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through what? Through faith. <laughs> a spell. He's like, who's put the spell on you? <laughs> to deceive you from the truth. Again, you and I were born under the curse of deception. Does everybody get it? We were born under the curse of deception. It deceived us from the truth. It kept us. It is the law of the veil. Until Christ, who is the eternal power truth, and presence of God Almighty who came into this realm. Can you imagine it? All of these years until Jesus came, only he could break the curse and the spell and rip the veil. He broke the curse of the spell by taking the curse of deception and the law of the veil for me and you. Amen? Second Corinthians three. Must have been a fast moving pen. <laughs> Second Corinthians three, verse twelve. Let's speak it. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at <clears throat> the end of what was passing away. But their minds were what? Blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. Again, that's why they are still under the spell because even the Israelites rejected Jesus. Not all of them, because they wrote the word, didn't they? <laughs> but they're still under the spell. You go over there and try and preach Jesus to many of them, they'll stone you to death. Many people will become Messianic Jews, who are, who are Christians now, have been disowned by their own families. You are no longer my son or my daughter. That's how bold and bound they are. I was hearing a testimony about a gentleman whose grandfather was a Sanhedrin priest or something like this and knew his grandpappy, loved him, loved each other. Came home one day, told him he had received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He said the dude manifested so bad he'd never seen his grandfather like that ever. Became evil, wicked, threw, started breaking everything and throwing everything at him, trying to kill him. Get out. I never want to see you again. You are not my grandchild. What kind of moron is that? Demonized under the spell. Amen. Dear goodness. Matthew 27. There are many believers that are out there helping, giving, witnessing, but their heart is hard. See, they're believing that they can.
please God by works. But the heart is hard. See, the heart is hard because of the spell. They're under the spell. We had some coming to our door today. <laughs> Praise God. I answered the door, yes. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> yeah, they don't hang around too long. Because they're under the spell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Praise God. Matthew 27, 50. Oh, Hallelujah. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked and the rocks were split. The veil, the veil, the curse of deception, the spell of the veil was removed to those who follow Christ. See, just because you become a... a, a a Christian doesn't mean your follower. Amen? The spell still stays then. And the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. That's called born again. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. In other words, they went out and what? Witnessed. Witness of what? What God had done for them. They have a testimony. They're not ashamed of the testimony. The veil, the spell, the curse keeps people in bondage because it seals them with fear all the time. Fear. In Psalm 11, fear and stupidity, I guess. All glory. Under the spell. You know, after, it's pretty amazing because after I beat my visitation and I was born again, the enemy tried to put me back under the spell over and over and over. Send individuals, send one of his high priests across my path and God rescued me from it. They used to pray against me. They used to stand in the back of the church and pray against me. But a curse without a cause is no effect. They knew all about my life. One came as a Christian one time to my home, wanted to teach me how to read the Bible and everything. But God exposed this person. Trying to put a curse back on me, trying to get me out of position. I was only a baby. See, the enemy goes after the babies as soon as they're born again to try to prevent them from growing, becoming adults. But just because you're an adult doesn't mean you can't go back and come out and fall under the curse and the veil. Psalm 11 and verse 1. Let's speak it. In the Lord I put my trust. How can you say to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow on the string that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. What are they trying to do? Bring a curse on you. Amen? Put a spell back on you. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? You better get back in position. Repent. That's what the righteous can do. 
get repent and get back in position is that fiery darts to entice deception and put you back under the spell. But God told us in Ephesians 6 about getting dressed with the full armor of God. The shield of faith that is able to quench every fiery dart. You know, believers still don't get dressed with the full armor of God. They call Jesus and say, oh, you can just do this, Jesus, do that. And Jesus said, get dressed with the full armor of God. There's a war out there. That armor is to protect you. It is used to not only defend, but attack. That's why there's the sword of the Spirit. Ephesians 6. You should always ask the Lord every day to dress you with the full armor of God. Amen? Amen. In Matthew 25. Remember, we're constantly fighting for the presence of God because if we fall out of the presence of God, we e can easily fall under the spell of the enemy. Then the next thing you know, you're compromising. You're becoming lazy. You're making decisions without acknowledging him. <clears throat> yeah. You're not giving him the glory, but you're giving the glory to the works of your hands. Psalm 11, uh, no, Mark 25, I'm sorry. Ma Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Is everybody there? Amen. Well, snapping good. Let's speak from verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will, set on the he will sit on the throne of his glory. All nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them from one another. As a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats, a sheep is submissive, lays his life down for the uh, shepherd, and a goat is rebellious. And he will set the sheep on the right hand, but the goats on the what? Left. Did you ever notice right now what's going on? I'm telling you, the left is not your government. They are a Nephilim agenda. They have their own religion, their own belief systems, and they are worshipers of Baal. They have no understanding because they're under the spell. And there are wolves of the left in the right. Wolves with sheep clothing. I'm not talking, I guess I am, in the political arena, but I'm not talking about the organizations. I'm not talking about these individuals that are under the spell. If you follow the Democratic Party all the way back, it goes all the way back to false deities, gods, and worship, and molestation, slavery, all of that. Because it's not a party of our government. It is a government of Satan. And we've got to get this understood quickly. Because when a storm comes, you don't want to get caught in it. Is everybody okay? Watch this. You ready? In verse 34, then the king will say to those on the right, come you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me and I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when do we do see you hungry and feed you and thirsty and you drink and when do we see you a stranger and take you in or naked or clothe you? And when do we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, and as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will also say to those on the left, again, this is no coincidence. Depart from me, you what? 
cursed. Why? Because they're under the spell. Into everlasting fire prepared for the devil who is your father and the angels who are, you are their offspring. Does everybody get this? These are the fallen angels. These are the Nephilim, Rephilim. Does everybody get this? For I was hungry and you gave me no food and I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. And I don't need to go any further. The left cursed of deception under the spell will be cast into everlasting fire with the devil, giants, ref, Nephilim, Rephilim, fallen angels, and demons whom they serve. The Democratic Party is the left and those that promote, approve, the left agenda are under the spell of deception and carry the law of the veil that causes them not to see or understand the truth that provides escape. Amen. This is where we are. This is reality. That's why you're seeing a fight. I'm telling you that the Democratic Party is not our government. When you begin to understand what's going on, what's happening, People are under the spell. Even the Washington, D.C. is not even a part of America. It's its own. The Vatican City is not a part of Italy. The Federal Reserve has got nothing to do with the federal government. It's an entity of itself ruled under Nephilim, Rephilim, fallen angels, and false deities. That's why your money is nothing but a piece of paper. But one day it's going to be backed by gold soon. Or value what it's supposed to be. The storm is coming. But see, people don't get this. They don't know this stuff. They have no idea. False religions, false prophets, all of these things that are going on. Because they're under the spell. And people that are under spell can't see it. They won't understand it. And they won't comprehend it. Hebrew 2. Hebrew 2. Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you, the main street media, they are prophets of Baal. They are liars and deceivers and accusers trying to prevent light from entering into darkness to expose darkness. Aren't you tired of being lied to? Yeah. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Hallelujah. Praise God. I think he took out, I think he left my Bible. <laughs> Hebrew took off. Hebrew chapter 2 and verse 1, let's speak it. Glory. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed, hearing, listening, seeing, being alert. To the things that we have heard and learned, lest we what? Drift. drift away. Oh, there's a lot of drifters. Lots of drifters. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. For he has not put the world to come of which we speak in subjection to angels. But one testified in a certain place saying, what is man that you are mindful of him? Or the son of man that you take care of him? You have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hand. You have put all things in subjection under his feet. 
For in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we do not yet see all things put under him. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the sufferings of the death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for each and every one of us. So there's a place where we must maintain, practice, stir up, reset, submit to God, pray, read the word, worship, fellowship, repent, confess, and depart from evil, and maintain the fear of the Lord. Why? So we don't drift away or sway under the spell again. When believers cease to seek holiness, righteousness, truth, and purity, it gives way to carnal appetites. Then Satan comes with the spell. And the result is disobedience, compromise, laziness, isolation, bitterness, and envy. Ephesians 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 1, you he made alive who were dead in what? Trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of air which we were under the spell. The spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience because they're under the spell. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others, because we are under the spell. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love, with which he loved us even when we were idiots and dead and trespasses and under the spell, pulled us out, called us out, and rescued us, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved by his plan, and raised us up, together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. He made us alive. He wakened us to the truth. Freed us from the curse under the spell of deception. What a dad. And I'm going to close in Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, 17. I'm actually excited about what's about to explode. I'm telling you. I'm just, yes! Evil is going to be exposed and removed. Don't know how long, but the process is already happening. Do you know that there's over like 1,800 indictments people don't even know? Huh? Sealed indictments. There's many people that are about to get arrested for pedophile. Obstruction of justice. Lying, cheating. I heard today a, a, a prophet, what's his name, Mark? Mark Taylor. He prophesied today or I don't know when he prophesied, but I heard it today. And he's the one that uh, spoke about um, Trump becoming a president, whatever. And he called Trump the God's anointed. He said Trump, the Lord told him that Trump is his anointed one for this time and that God was going to use him to turn everything around. And he said, because they have touched my anointed one, two previous presidents will die and three, two to three will go to prison and shaken. This is what the prophet said. Two previous presidents will die. And the other two to three possibly in prison. But he was pretty much sure two of them were going to prison at least. 
Because God is moving. His kingdom will come and his government will come on earth as it is in heaven. And then the king will be throned because his government will be here. Oh, glory. Love it. Verse 17. And this I say, therefore, in testifying, O Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind, having their understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance and stupidity that's in them and because they're under the spell and because of the blindness of their heart. Why? Because they're under the spell. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work of uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. So the old man is growing corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. In other words, it's perishing. But the new man is being revived more and more and more and becoming more and more in the image of likeness of Christ from glory to glory. Verse 23, but be renewed in the spirit of your mind, your thoughts, that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lie and leech, each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil by what? Association with darkness and deception. You know, you got to be careful. Things that you read, music that you listen to, all kinds of things. The enemy is knocking. Jesus warned Cain about that. The enemy is knocking at your door. Many people are going, who is it? <laughs> They're not even asking that. They're just saying, come on in. They don't even know who's knocking on the door. No security. They gotta, if you're in a secret place, you got security. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has a need. And let no corrupt words proceed out of your mouth but that which is necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And let all what? Bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another and tender, tender hearted, forgiving one another even as God in Christ forgave you. Here we are. Last days and time. Watching it manifest before our eyes. Oh, glory, I love it. We've been praying and waiting for this. Praying and waiting for this. I had a testimony of a gentleman the other day. He said, for 37 years, we've been praying and waiting for this. It's here. It's now. We need to stay in the secret place and prepared. Maintain unity. Quit putting everything else first and keep him first. Amen. Amen. And to God be the glory. Father, we thank you for your word and warning. We thank you for breaking the spell off of us. We ask you to continue to impart a thirst and hunger of righteousness and to seek you in everything that we do. Forgive us for anything that we've done that we've not acknowledged you. Forgive us for unfulfilled vows. Have mercy upon us and let your grace abound. And dispatch your angels to us, making a way of escape, snaring our enemies in our nets while we escape safely, but keeping us alert visiting us in dreams and visions and granting us the eyes to see things all the way through. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen.